Hey, good morning, guys. I figured I'm up already. I actually have today off. Why not go live at 10 a.m. in the morning and see what happens? So, yeah, uh, I went to Half Price Books yesterday and got all of this for $20. So I figured I wanted to do like an unboxing slash, I guess, unbagging video just to show you guys what I got. Um, to be honest, it was so early yesterday when I went to this sale. I don't 100% remember every single item that's in here. So some of it might be a surprise to me. Um, probably nothing like no stealth buys or anything in here. Just some, I think, decent quality books. Uh, usually they factor out to be about 15 cents per item in the bag. So there's that. Uh, but first, I just wanted to plug my 200 subscriber contest. So I'm actually up to, I believe, five entries now. Uh, so if you guys don't see your name on this list, just shoot me a message. Let me know. Um, this has been a busy last couple of days. I might have just missed the entry. So if you, there is an entry out there, just let me know. Hey, what's up, Matilda? Speaking of uh, entries, there's Matilda Gothica. She uh, entered my contest. So thank you for that. Just got done watching that video. So uh, I guess without further ado, because this one's probably going to go for a minute, we may as well just start unpackaging this beast here. So. Uh, on top, they actually had, besides books, they have like games and CDs and random stuff. So uh, somehow, like, I guess you can't even give away PlayStation games anymore. So I had a little bit of room on top of the bag. So I picked up these. These games are terrible. <laughs> I'll just be honest. But hey, when you can just pop them on top and walk out of the door with them, like, eh, why not? Uh, so purely for nostalgia purposes, I picked up wcw versus the world for playstation one i guess they were even trying to sell these for a dollar couldn't give them away for a dollar and they literally i guess couldn't give them away till i walked up and like i said these are mainly for nostalgia i mean i just you know love these old wcw items like the hat which i probably won't wear because i don't want to get my head itchy at 10 a.m in the morning uh the other two games are garbage i'll be honest but they were next to it so i kind of just picked them up in a handful so i got wcw mayhem in that tote bag i just laid it on top and then wcw backstage assault i might have a ceremonial smashing or something of these two just because these games are so bad um but yeah but they were in there. I grabbed them. I didn't have to pay any extra for them. So thank goodness. We'll just set those way to the side. All right. I think I might have one more game wedged in there. I don't even, I didn't know if I had a copy of this or not. It fit in the side of the bag. So I'm like, yeah, I guess I'll take it with me. So there's Call of Duty Modern Warfare 3. Um, played a ton of this online back in the day. I suck at this game. I'll be perfectly honest. Uh, but had a lot of fun with it. Figured if nothing else, I'll have a... Uh, shelf copy just to have it because i think i did trade this in way back when so get it back for basically 15 cents that was cool all right on to some books um this was just laying around their store like i guess no one wanted it um so this is the walking dead trade paperback number two i think i already have a copy of this but i might add this to my giveaway or just maybe even resell it for dirt dirt cheap uh, but it was like they had like a little spinner rack. This is the only thing left on it when they opened. So I couldn't believe it stayed there that long. I'm like, ah, I guess I'll go ahead and rescue it. Why not? So there's that. <clears throat> Try to find that a good home for somebody. I was also digging through the 50 cent bins, found some Mike Turner Soulfire Dying of the Light number three. It's a little wreck, but I like Mike Turner. I like giving his stuff away in my contest. So I figured. More Mike Turner can't hurt, so I picked that up. <clears throat> and then this is where it gets. This is where it's going to get kind of surprising for everybody. So I got this uh, like mystery package for. They usually have yeah two dollars on these, but like I said, they don't really care what you cram into the tote bag. So I crammed. I might have crammed one or two of these in. We'll see. So let's see what's in it because I have no idea. <laughs> so that's the only time I like buying these because they can put some. Some halfway decent reads in there, but they can put some garbage in these things just to get rid of them. So let's just see what we got here. That might be garbage. All right. So we got that ripped up and open. So it looks like we got a satellite Sam number 14. This is a Matt Fraction series. So I haven't read it, but I wouldn't mind because I do like Matt Fraction. So we'll see what that's like. Uh, on the front, the main reason I got this one, thought it was cool, it had uh, 
Aquaman number one from 86. So like, I think this is the first post-crisis Aquaman uh, series. So it's like, why not Just put it on top of the pile? So I have no idea what the rest of these books are. Uh, this one says it's Adventures of the Outsiders number 33. So there goes Outsiders. Oh, really, Matilda, they have these type of packs at your bookstore. That's cool. <clears throat> uh, Outsiders number seven. Yep, this one's still from the 80s. Nira Cyber Angel from Entity Comics. I have never heard of Entity Comics or this. It's definitely 90s of fight on there. So I've got some nice little glitter title going on. So there's that. Yeah, like I said, you never know what you're going to find in these types of things. Poison Lost Child from London Night. Poison with a Z. I'm not saying it poison. I'm pronouncing it poison. <laughs> Pison, I guess. So there's that. Blood and Roses Adventures from Night Press. Like you say, you really never know what you're going to find in these things. I haven't heard of a lot of these publishers, let alone these titles. Jazz. Just Jazz from High Impact Studio. Huh. Interesting. I recognize this one, Glory Number 10. That's a 90s image title right there. Of course, on the back, they'd always have like these, like the model covers and everything because it was the 90s. <laughs> and then the last one in that package, Urban Decay Kill Zone. No idea. I guess this is an ash can. Hmm. I have no idea which studio it says. I guess Kill Zone Studio. So there we go. Interesting. Once again, never heard a lot of 90s stuff I haven't heard of. So pretty cool. Like you say, you never know what you're going to get out of those things. They kind of just cram stuff in when they can't sell it. All right. <clears throat> Next little pile here. More 50 cent finds. I guess, well, they're 50 cent sells, but I got them $20 in the tote. So um, Captain America 18. I'm always looking to fill holes in the uh, Ed Brubaker early Captain America run because this is a really good run. If you guys are looking for Captain America stuff, check out Ed Brubaker's first run. It's really amazing. Uh, there's been a lot of videos lately, like show books off that you always have to grab when you see it. Um, for the, for I guess for me, these are those. Uh, I always end up just picking up these Deathmate books on the cheap. It was the Valiant Image crossover that eventually introduced us to Gen 13, but there's a lot of cool artists who work on these books. Um, and they printed like 11 billion of them back in the day. So I got Deathmate Red, Deathmate Blue, and then Deathmate Yellow. I don't think they had a Deathmate Black. I probably already bought their Deathmate Black they had for 50 cents. So these are usually dirt cheap, but they're cool reads, and they usually have multiple, like multiple 90s image artists in there. Um, let's see. Matilda asks, have you heard from Justin? Uh, no, I haven't. Uh, was he not on? And I guess he didn't do a weekly video this week. Huh. I don't know. That's weird. I, that just now crossed my mind, Matilda. Hopefully everything's all right. All right. <clears throat> so we'll keep going. And like I said, a lot of these were just kind of random grabs. I was trying to grab and go because there were other collectors and stuff there. And they're just, I mean, people are just like taking just hand, arms fulls and putting them in carts. And then they were taking bags and resorting them back. So they weren't even taking the time to fill. They were just resorting later. Um, oh, really? Not in the last two. Well, hopefully uh, Exile State's all right. I haven't heard. Yeah, as I was say, I just come to think of it, time's been going so fast, I don't remember, like, recall the last time I've seen a video from you. Probably, yeah, like a couple weeks. What's up, poor man's comics? Oh, he has a uh, minor surgery. Well, hopefully he's all right. Uh, best wishes to Exile State that I had no idea. Um, I hadn't had a chance to catch uh, Jesse's weekly Thursday show yet, so I didn't know if he was on that one or not. Uh, but next up. They didn't have Earth 2 number one, uh, but I got Earth 2 number two from the New 52. I think this was, for a while, this was a, like a little bit of a key issue, or I think is either the end of the first, or maybe it was this one where they like kill off most of the Earth 2 trinity, I guess. So I saw that in there, like, ah, drop it in there, read it, see what it's like. And then they had issue three next to it as well, so I just went ahead and picked that up because why not? It fit in the bag. And I thought this annual had a cool cover. It kind of reminded me of, uh, you know, the whole Thomas Wayne Batman during uh, Flashpoint. 
So I picked that up, thought it was kind of neat. See what that looks like. Uh, I got a Bryce Day 24 because I thought this was a really cool Gary Frank Swamp Thing cover. So I got that. <clears throat> and I was picking up a bunch of these uh, Detective Comics from the, uh, I think it's the John Lehman run of what you do with Jason Fabok. So I haven't read this run, but I know if nothing else with Fabok on the pencils, it's going to look good. So I figured I'd get that. Then someone forgot to steal this Batman 483. Pretty much every time they have one of these sales, I don't know if it's an employee of the store or someone just waits in line all night and they get in and get out as soon as they can. But there's a person that every time they have one of these sales, they grab the entire Batman section and the entire Spider-Man section. And by the time I get there at like 9.02, which they open at 9 a.m., all of their, they're completely cleaned out. They're, the tabs are completely empty. So... Yeah, they they missed this one, so for what that's worth, I grabbed this. Well, that was cool. And then this one, I, the only reason I grabbed this out of the bins is every time I'm flipping through the yays and half price books, I'm like, oh, cool, American Vampire number one per book, and then it's the Vertigo Essentials reprint. Um, so I'm just like, yeah, just uh, go ahead and get this so it quits confusing me every single time I see it. So there's that. Can't beat some Scott Snyder American Vampire. Uh, these two are lingering in the 50 cent bins, which sucks because I need to try to get these stickers off. Uh, but they had Old Guards issues one and two, but they're signed by Greg Rucka. So, yeah, I guess someone gave up their signed collection. And I definitely recognize that signature because it's funny because in my contest, I have a Lazarus number one signed by Greg Rucka. So I definitely know his signature. So I might just throw these into one of the contests, too, if I can get these 50 cent stupid stickers off safely and all that good stuff but the good thing is image has that nice smooth cover so hopefully i can peel it off with no problems so we'll see uh what else we got here now, image plus number one um this one's beat up of course because it was lingering in the 50 cent bin got the boys number whatever this is sorry i don't collect the boys from december 2010 i think that was a cool homage to the uh, Dark Knight Returns cover. So, but that was cool. So I picked it up. I have most of this Animal Man run, but I didn't think I had the second annual. 15 cents. I guess I'll get that first profit or whatever. So got two of these. 15 cents a piece, I guess. Just got to get that pesky sticker off again. Um, I'm not having success. Yeah, I, those, those half price book stickers, man. Hey, what's up, Joker M21? Yeah, thanks, uh, man. Uh, those, yeah. Once again, the 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 last night, and I couldn't believe a lot of those lots people were bidding against me. So I, I yeah, especially yeah. Uh, I think I got the first modern Deadshot, and I was the only one who bid on it for some reason. I have no idea why. Um, so yeah, cool auction last night. Uh, from the New York Warriors, that's for sure. Uh, next up, X-Men 30, the wedding issue between Gene and Scott. I couldn't remember if I had this or not. Oh, yeah, that was the funniest auction ever. Poor man. <laughs> I mean, I was laughing until about, like, what, 1.30 in the morning? Uh, but I couldn't remember if I, I probably have a copy of this somewhere, but I couldn't remember. So it fit in the bag, so I picked it up. <clears throat> uh, I was trying to fill a lot of uh, X-Men holes from probably, like, well, the beginning till 300. Obviously, the beginnings, you know, kind of hard to fill in because they're super expensive. But I figured, like, 300 would be a good cutoff point because that's where they get, like, from common to super common in terms of X-Men. But picked up 298. Just, you know, nothing else. You're always going to get cool art. I think this was Peterson. And then same thing, 299 here. So obviously I have like two or three copies of 300 at this point, probably. And for some reason, it seems like the city does not like X-Men. The people I was talking to were super weird to collect in this uh, at the sale yesterday. I mean, they're just like, I watched, I literally watched all these people like get arms full of comics and then skip the X-Men. It was super weird. And I, I kind of said something like, man, no one in the city really collects X-Men. They're like, yeah, it's uh that stuff's from the 90s. There's like a million copies of all that stuff everywhere. I'm like, okay, cool. I get to hit it, get it then. <laughs> so there's 295. 
And then they're like making fun of people who collected slabs. I'm just like, oh, okay, <laughs> not fun. These are probably doubles for me once again. They fit in the bag. Wolverine 94. Wolverine, I can't remember because it's a deluxe edition, but it's Wolverine 90 something. The number's on the back, and I'm not going to get it out right now. Wolverine 98. Yeah, I think I definitely have this one. Wolverine 96. And then these were in there as a row. So it was one of the few kind of actual runs that were in there. But this one, first one's a second printing. It's Wolverine number I at 90 of the whatever Wolverine months to die, I guess. I always thought these were kind of cool covers where his claws were exploding. So I got that. I got issue 10, issue 11, where he's out of claws, and then issue 12, where he's out of skin and claws and everything. So I thought that was kind of cool. I always was kind of eyeballing them when they were out originally. So I'm like, yeah, for 15 cents, you throw them in the bag. Uh, I got an X-Force number three. Like I said, I absolutely love this uh, Craig Kyle and Chris Yost X-Force run. So it's kind of one of those things. Every time I see it, I kind of got to pick it up. Just kind of rescue it out of the dollar bin, I guess. So I got that. I had a Winter Soldier number one. Hadn't read this run from Brubaker, but I know I like his Captain America run, so it couldn't hurt to get this. I might actually have, like, they might have done a Joe Hubert variant for this. I might actually have it in that. Sometimes with the variants, it gets a little confusing to keep track of what's what sometimes. But uh, definitely don't have that cover, to say the least. Got an X-23-16. I thought there was more X-23 in there, but I think I just forgot to pick it up because someone else started pulling through that box. But I did see this one and picked that up. Got a new X-Men 43. Just thought it was kind of a cool cover. Uh, I always run across these new X-Men's in those bins. So once again, if they have another one of these, I might pick more of those up. So I'm just going to pick up the ones on the side here. Oh, yeah. So they had some uh, Grant Morrison JLA. So I couldn't leave that laying in there. Uh, there's number 14 from the Rock of Ages. This is an absolutely awesome storyline. Basically, you know, all the villains win. And, you know, the Justice League, at this point, they're just trying to reverse time, it seems like. I mean, you got half the sidekick characters are skeletons in the background at that point because they've already lost. So. Uh, of course, you know, Dark Side is, as we know from the new Mr. Miracle run. So it's a cool run. So if, I'd like to complete like this whole Grant Morrison JLA run one day. I, for some reason, I think me and my brother collected him when we were kids. And when he moved to college, that's one of the pieces of the collection he took with him. So actually missing a lot of these Justice Leagues in my collection. And then there's number 15. I do remember this one as a kid, Justice League number eight. This one where the uh, Connor Hawk Green Arrow joins the team. Number nine. I said, I apologize. This is a bit out of order. Number 10. Uh, yeah, this is the one, also around the time we had the electric Superman. So everyone remembers that one so fondly, I guess. Uh, number five. And then number four. Now, yeah, this one was the last one with the typical 90s mullet Superman. I think I have the issue one that came with this collection. I think I just bought it when I saw it originally. So unfortunately, someone bought that two and three, I guess. I should have bought those when I saw those two. Uh, there's one more wedged in the side. Got a Detective Comics 839. Oof, this one's beat up as heck. I didn't even realize that until just now. Like There's like a ton of rubbing on the side. It's been going on. But hey, whatever. It was dirt cheap. I may already have this one, but I like those Simone Bianchi covers, so. Definitely had to get that when I saw it. And like I said, basically in these sales, if you see Batman, just pick it up because someone else is going to swipe it as soon as they see it, no matter what the book is. Uh, Uncanny 446. Uh, this was from the Chris Claremont, Alan Davis comeback run, I guess you could say. Fortunately, they didn't have like the run where X-23 joins the team right around this. Uh, but like I said, they didn't have much from this run, so I picked that one up. I believe this is... I don't know if it's a second print or a new stand variant, so I just picked it up nonetheless. Uh, X-Men 36. Usually it has that shiny side on there. Uh, so it seems like the more rare ones of these is where it doesn't have like that extra foil on the side. So I'm like, yeah, why not? Go ahead and grab it. Like I said, I, these people, I, they don't like X-Men in the city. I don't know what's wrong with them. So more for me, I guess. Uh, once again, priority have it, but I got an X-Men 289. And most of these I'll probably either give away or like sell for a buck or something. So if you guys are like absolutely needing something, 
um, and want to pay a few bucks for shipping, maybe just let me know because I probably already have a lot of these. Um, there's X-Men 284 and then 259. Can't leave Mark Silvestri X-Men in these bins, that's for sure. All right. Ooh, man, I still got a lot of the bag to go. I didn't even realize. Didn't take a count on them this time, but I, like I said, usually by the time I count these and divide the math, it's about 15 cents an item. So let's we'll see if it comes to that. I feel like I might have got a little more than that, actually. I uh, got US. Yeah, this one's two of two. Um, an Alex Ross image property. So too bad they didn't have issue one. This is one of those boxes. Like sometimes when they have these sales, they set up a separate folding table and just park things out that they didn't have time to put in the bins or stuff. They had like six bins. Unfortunately, I'm based on the fact that they're actually priced. They did have time to actually sort through and probably see what they wanted and all that good stuff. So there's that. I uh, got Wolverine and the X-Men number one. I think I had the variant cover for this, but I kept flipping through and seeing this regular cover every time I shopped there. So I told myself this is still there. When I did the tote bag sell, I just go ahead and grab it. So went ahead and grabbed it, obviously. So there's that. I think Trinity Entertainment, I was going to give my copy of this, but now I found a copy there. I'll probably still give him my copy because this one does have a sticker on it that probably is insignificant to him. This is the New 52 number one uh, from Free Comic Book Day, probably 2012, 2013, something like that. Cool Jim Lee cover. I think this is the first appearance of somebody like that. Basically, is like that girl who showed up at all the New 52 number ones. I think Pandora, I think, was her name or something like that. I think this is her like actual first appearance that well, was not a cameo. So there's that. I need an un which uncanny did I show an uncanny X-Men you needed, poor man? Yeah, just let me know if you need one. I'll put it on your stack. <laughs> actually, did I grab something for poor man in this? I'm oh yeah, it's next up, actually. Speaking of. Uh I'm gonna send this to you, poor man. I found a Mr. T in the T Force number three. I know you pick up those number ones, but I found the number three. So that's going in your pile. I don't care if you have it or not already. So there you go. That's for poor man. I know a lot of people go crazy about these Malibu Suns. I don't really know too much about them. I know one of them was the first appearance of Spawn. This is not the first appearance of Spawn. Uh, but this is Malibu Sun number 18. So this is the only one of these I've ever seen in the wild. So I went ahead and just threw it in the bag because why not? It says Brian Lumley's Necroscope. So kind of a cool, interesting cover there. So had to have that. Once again, more doubles, but I couldn't leave these laying in there. This is Wolverine's Origin, number five. And then Wolverine's Origin, number three. These things used to go for so much money. <laughs> now they're in dollar and 50 cent bins. So I guess just the sentimental part of me just has to have as many copies of Wolverine's Origin as possible. Because that was a huge deal back in the day. This book just came out, so I don't know why it was still in the bins. Uh, but Wolverine Song, number three. <laughs> I kind of want to find issue two now. Um, so there's that. Oh, he was just smart off. Says he's X Men number. Does that mean you have X Men's one through like whatever minus just number four? This cover looked familiar. I don't even know why, but like I said, it fit the bag, so I got it. New Titans '96. Just always have a soft spot for Titans, so saw that, picked it up. Saw a few New Mutants once again. I'll probably end up giving a lot of these away. But New Mutants '23, cool Bilson Kevich cover. Uh, got a New Mutants 82, Face Garm, the Guardian of Netherworld. Yeah, I think that's another double for me, but love me some New Mutants. Maybe that movie will come out by the time uh, Poor Man finds his X-Men number four. And then I had an issue 68 as well. So I'd like to see what that movie looks like, no matter how bad it is at this point. It'll be like direct a red box or something anyway. Oh, I do have another mystery package. We'll get into this in a second. Uh, they had Marvel Superhero Secret Wars, one of those action card hero variants. This one, oh, it's actually a Captain Marvel and the Carol Corps number one uh, action figure variants. I don't even know what this was. <laughs> they did so many of these random, like, oh, it's actually signed to. That's why I picked it up. It's signed by somebody. So there we go. Don't know whose signature that is because I, I didn't even know this was a Carol Corps book, let alone whose signature that is. So I'll crack that open and figure it out. But just why they're, they're putting signed books in these dollar bins now, it's really hilarious. 
this book seems to be drawn to me. I don't understand why. I, this is probably like my fourth or fifth copy, but I always just love this dark side cover. This is Legion number 294, uh, the end of the dark side, or the uh, Great Darkness Saga, sorry. So there's that. Once again, this is probably going to give away because I think this is my fourth or fifth copy. Uh, there were some Charles Soule signed comics, so I found the She-Hulk number three, signed by Charles Soule. So I thought that was pretty cool. Uh, they had a Sinestro number one. This might be a variant cover, I think. You guys can let me know. It doesn't. It just cover just did not look familiar to me. Um, but I did want Sinestro number one because they had a lot of the rest of the run. So, yep, yeah, I was like, yep, that's going in. So, Colin Bunn Sinestro. Like I said, there's a She-Hulk number two signed by Charles Soule. Can't beat that for 15 cents. Didn't have to wait in line. X-Factors number seven and eight. So, I had one through six. So, like, why not grab seven and eight because they're there? And then there's number eight. And then I can't remember. This might be 350, something like that. Um, this is X-Men, the non-foil variant. I already have the foil one. So once it kind of goes back to that you know, other book I showed, I think this might just be a newsstand variant, basically. So I thought that was kind of cool. I might even, this one's signed too. It's in a grab bag for two bucks. And I got a signed one in there. I didn't even realize that. But let's go ahead and unbox or unbag this and see what's in there. See if we get some more insane 90s stuff that maybe you guys can illuminate me on exactly what it is. So I had no idea about that last grab bag. So like I said, I just grabbed these because usually they're just fun to go through. I figured you guys might enjoy them too. So the main thing that drew me to this was you can't be some bloodlines from the 90s. Me and Chad from, uh, I guess, Comic Core, not reviews from the Pat Cave because of all that mess. But uh, Chad from the Comic Core, we were talking about bloodlines and how you know fun these were to read. You know, all the old Elseworlds books from DC. These aren't necessarily the Elseworlds. I think Elseworlds was the year after Bloodlines, if I remember right. But I remember reading these as a kid, and I was just like, there's just some crazy, insane gore in these that's like, is so weird from a book like that from DC. And I'm just like, I shouldn't be reading this. But yeah, this one's the Teen Titans annual number one, I guess. So always got to love and laugh at some bloodlines. I might give that to my uh, friend Mike as a gag gift one day because he, he's uh, he loves those bloodlines slash hates them. So um, have a drawing to finish, Matilda. All right. Uh, have a good day, Matilda. Thanks for making it. Thanks for anyone making it at 1030 on a Sunday morning. This is crazy. I was just like, well, I may as well just go live because it'll the, it uploads faster for whatever reason than me just sitting in front of my computer um, waiting for it to upload if I did, you know, recording. So that's why I've been going live with pretty much everything I do anymore on my channel. Um, poor man says, man, your half price books is filled with six. Best book I found at half price books is a Tim Seeley and a David Mack. Uh, yeah, like I said, it's just kind of weird. It's like they don't care at all, or like they just think it's drawn on or something. It doesn't. I, don't, I guess it just doesn't cross their mind that it's a signed book. But yeah, I could find. I think in my giveaway, I put. I think I put a Ramita signature in there. I got that one at half price books for a dollar too. So um, anyway, back to the uh, the the mystery bag here. I guess got a. Oh, this is awesome. Got a new Teen Titans number eleven. I think this is that second volume they did in the eighties, but. Hey, you can't beat New Teen Titans, that's for sure. New Teen Titans won in cooperation. This looks like a free giveaway, even though it's kind of wrecked, it looks like. It says, in cooperation with the President's Drug Awareness Campaign. So, it's really interesting. So, there's that. It's pretty cool. Definitely never seen that before. Oof, this one looks like it might have been ran over by a car before they put it in there. Uh, I got the dreaded yellow sticker on there. Those are the worst to get off. That's not, that's probably not coming off. So I got, looks like they actually include first wave number one and two from Rags Morales and Brian Azzarello. So there's issue two. Then laying on top is issue one. Oh, that's cool. They, get, they threw in an X Machina 19. It's a cool Brian K. Vaughn series. I want to read all these one day. Oh my God, are all these signed? <laughs> This is ridiculous. One of them is a convention exclusive. So the the last four are all uh, skull kickers, which actually it's a halfway decent uh, image run. Uh, got the first issue of my bins actually. 
Um, sorry, I'm trying to get them all in order here. These are kind of randomized. So I think, yeah, it's got to be Jim Zub's um, autograph on all of these. So they threw in an issue 25. This was, I guess it was an awesome con variant. So that's pretty cool. And Jim Zub signed it up there. So that's pretty funny. Uh, next up, 26, regular cover, also signed by Jim Zub. So they have the, all, all four of these are signed. 27, there's a signature there. Then the one that's actually, I think, facing out was issue 29. And then there's a signature there. So uh, there you go. Signed comics in a $2 grab bag that I paid, I guess, 15 cents for. <laughs> so there we go. Pretty awesome. Oh, my God. I still got so much to go. Yeah, like I said, I just want to keep getting into the books. So we're going to keep going here. Surprise, this is probably like, I don't know, this is probably the biggest surprise for me to find. I guess I don't think it goes for anything, but got a Buffy book. I think this is Buffy issue one. I don't know if this is the first comic Buffy did or not. Probably not. Maybe, who knows. Uh, but nonetheless, I've been on a big Buffy kick lately with see the new season that's been out in comics. Uh, so definitely had to grab that when I saw it. This might be, no, nah, it's not my order. I got Wolverine 65. I think this is the first run that Jason Aaron did. It's not the first issue of the run, but I think it's part of that run. Uh, him and Ron Garney had with the, I think it was Get Mystique. Uh, but just a cool run there that I never got a chance to collect in single reads. So I thought that was cool to see that. Uh, new, or I'm sorry, New X Men. Uncanny X Men 228. I think that's Rick Leonardi who did the cover. Actually, I think I'm going to see him in uh, Cincinnati in September. So I'll definitely have to check that out. Poor Man confirms that's not the first Buffy. Thank you, Poor Man. I might have to look for that one day. I, that, that's definitely something I don't have. Got a random issue of Beavis and Butthead. I don't know if it's issue 25 or if they're celebrating 25 years. But why not get Beavis and Butthead? They're funny. Uh, got a whole bunch of Detective Comics. Uh, this one's from the Francis Manipal, Brian Buccioletto run, however you pronounce his name. But love Francis Manipal's art, so definitely had to get this. I thought about getting these when they were coming out regularly, uh, but did not because they were just $4 at the time for me for that book. Wasn't going to happen, so there's that. Then 30 Then even though I don't think the guys worked on it, I got an issue 35 because I was next to it. Why not? Don't know. This one's issue 16, I believe. I think that's an Adam Hughes cover. Maybe not. I know poor man's going to correct me on that if I'm wrong. But uh, Bear's 16. That was a cool looking cover. And then they had a whole bunch of uh, Alex Ross stuff from Justice Society. So I picked up some random Justice Societies. So it's JSA 21. Cool Alex Ross cover. Magogs is a crazy cyborg cable arms. Uh, 17. Annual number one, which I'm sure probably went for like, no, actually it was a $4. Usually annuals any more five bucks, but this one was $4. But cool cover right there. Looks like they're all giving Power Girl some love. Yep, he says, Ferris is all Adam Hughes. Thank you again, poor man. Got to see if Jeremy wants this one. I know he was looking for some uh, Batmans in the 30s, so picked up a Batman 32. Probably just end up sending that to him. Make sure I put it on his stack up there. Black Night Zero, completely forgot I grabbed this one. So that's an extra for me, too. Got the whole Black Knight run. Couldn't leave this in those bins. Oh, he says now it is the first Buffy. It's cool. I guess I don't have to look for it now. That's awesome. Uh, Teen Titans Annual 1, which is funny because I thought they had, maybe it was a special. But I swear Teen Titans had an Annual 1 before this issue 1. So I don't know. <laughs> But nonetheless, I, I did like most of this run. Uh, this is like right after John's left, and I think Sean McKeever took over. His run wasn't half bad, but it, it's a hard act to follow Jeff Johns, obviously. So I, I definitely pick up these Teen Titans when I can. Oh, my gosh. The last handful. So the last haul of the bag. Got X-Men Red number five. I think I already have this one, too. But like I said, if I already have them, I'll either – Flip them for a buck or just give them away. Um, but an excellent run X-Men Red has been. So definitely had to. I, they could have had every X-Men Red in there. I would have thrown them all in the bag. <clears throat> 
Secret Origins number two. Once again, just another cool cover on that one. I know I think the Harley one's the money book in this whole run, if there is a money book. So but that was cool. It was in there. Uh, X-Men Gold Annual number one. Uh, cool Excalibur cover swipe issue, I guess. So decided to throw that in. I could have picked up, like, I think the entire X-Men Gold run if I wanted to. Someone out there in this, like I said, someone just say doesn't like X-Men. They must have hated X-Men Gold because they had, like, every issue of X-Men Gold in there. Got Ultimate Comic Spider-Man 200. So, once again, actually, you know, I'm just going to go ahead and add this in the giveaway now because I already know I've got an extra copy of that. So, there we go. Hey, what's up, uh, Comicolics? Is it Wayne or Jess? You never know. <laughs> Suplex City. Oh, yeah. I think I got the Indianapolis one on today. I think I had... I might have the Chicago one. I can't remember. I thought I bought two of them, but I think this is my favorite wrestling shirt currently, or the Lesnar ones. Uh, next up, we've got She Daredevil. I didn't even know She and Daredevil crossed over. Uh, so there's that. Got an issue one of that, because why not? And then I didn't decide at the time. Oh, this one's Daredevil She, because of the 90s, when things were different, or instead of putting an issue two, or doing something like that. Oh, cool. Both of you guys are watching. What's up, guys? There we go. Um, so instead of She Daredevil, this one's Daredevil She. So there we go. All right. Like I said, we love some bloodlines on this show. So we got more bloodlines. This one's Superman the Man of Steel, Annual 2. 90s goodness. Like I said, I think I'm going to package all these together and send them to my buddy in Chicago. He loves them. <laughs> Like he, when we went to C2E2, he bought the, there. he was joking. I was like, if they have that trading card box of bloodlines, I think I'm going to buy it. And then someone actually had it for like 10 bucks. I'm like, you're not passing that. You have to buy that. So he did. I don't know if he ever did an unpacking of those cards. Hopefully he did. More bloodlines, Superman Action Comics, annual number five. Looks like the Eradicator is getting eradicated by loose cannon on there. Bloodlines, Batman Annual 17. Yeah, I'm definitely going to be flipping through these uh, these books. They, Like I said, as a kid, they always crack me up then. Cool Alex Ross cover. Looks like we got the uh, the Dark Side of Mary Marvel on issue 25. I remember that was like a whole big thing in the um, late 2000, yeah, 2009. I know Dan DeDito was convinced he needed to turn Mary Marvel heel for some reason, so... There's that. I think that was during that countdown garbage. Ugh, we won't talk about countdown anymore. Those are all in the bins, by the way, and I skipped them all. <laughs> uh, just Society number 16, once again, another cool Magog cover. Uh, I, I should probably get this whole run at this point. Love the Johns, and I mean, basically, Ross was on the creative two on that, so it's, it's really neat. Oof, that's ticked off. Uh, got a Fantastic Four 310. Rough sides, but oh well, it's got a cool cover of the thing when he had that like minor redesign in the, uh, I think it was the late 80s. So there's that. Shout out to the great legend. I know he loves him, some Fantastic Four. Actually, I think, eh, no, I got Wolverine 60 crammed in there. Wolverine number 60. Like I said, I'd like to complete most of this Wolverine. I'm kind of collecting that up until issue 100. So luckily this year I found an issue one for cheap finally. Fantastic Four, 392, some 90s fantastic goodness there. Just to think it was 90s. If not, it was pretty dang close. 89 or something like that. Fantastic Four, 294. Yeah, when he turned into a pine cone. Perfect four, man. Uh, Doctor Strange, Source of Supreme. This was an issue one. I think what, Kevin Nolan, I think, did this one maybe. So there's that. Love me some Doctor Strange this year. That's for sure, too. Well, I'd love to have had some of the bronze stuff, but we know that's not going to happen. <laughs> uh, from that earlier run, though, they did have an issue 45 from the previous run. Oh, it was a cool cover. Half skeleton, Doctor Strange. I guess he had it paid a visit to Thanos, maybe. And the last book, finally. Fantastic Four 335. So that was the last book in the pile. I guess just a recap for comic comics and poor man because i know they'll appreciate these they probably missed the beginning of the show but got these in there as well some awful wcw playstation games they got versus the world 
backstage assault and mayhem. So let me know when you guys are available to watch my ceremonial smashing or destruction of these discs because they're terrible, but they fit in the bag. So I left with them. So there's that. Uh, well, it took me 40 minutes to get through this whole bag. So thank you guys so much for tuning in at Sunday morning of all times. Like I said, I just was debating and making a video this morning. I definitely wanted to do a separate video for this on bagging because I knew it was going to take, well, 40 minutes. I didn't want to do it on the uh, live stream because I have other things I want to show and talk about on there. So if you guys want to see, there is this, this madness and destruction in front of me now. I don't know what I'm going to do with all this. Uh, but yeah, most of it are just going to give away yourself for a buck. I just love going to these sales and picking through the stuff because they like to bring stuff out of the back and just park it on tables. Let's see. I think Jess is saying Wayne can't stop playing WWF No Mercy for the N64. Yeah, that's a really good game. I think my favorite, though, from that one is still, um, it's got to be uh, Revenge, WCW and WR Revenge. I just love that roster. Uh, that's my favorite 90s roster. I know the Attitude Era was great, too. You know, w WWF 2000, or WrestleMania 2000. Love that game, uh, especially since, you know, they got Jericho in in time, and he had the triple power bomb and the Lion Tamer which is cheating. So if you guys are doing like a tournament play, Jericho should probably be banned in that game. <laughs> but I just love Revenge the most because of the, I mean, just the cast characters they have in that one. And they left out Flair and Arn though. That's, I'm still a little bitter about that, but it's a really good game. Uh, but with that, that's the whole haul. Um, I will probably do a couple more videos this week. Uh, I'll, I should be able to do the uh, Tuesday night live stream, 7.30 every Tuesday. Until I have to work, of course. So I'm trying to at least maintain one consistent scheduled video a week. Uh, on the, I guess we'll call it anti-comic book day because no one talks about comics on Tuesdays, it seems like, in the community for the most part. So I'm like, oh, that's going to be my day because why not? No one will step on my toes. <laughs> so, And then uh, if you guys haven't done so already, uh, 200 subs contest still going on throughout the end of September. Um I believe September 23rd was the end date, so I expect to see Poor Man's Comics video September 22nd, about 11.59 Eastern, so we've already talked about that, but I've already got five people who have made videos, so thank you so much to these five people. Um, I'll probably, once this uploads and all that good stuff, I'll probably put the link to that, all my videos. Uh, oh, thanks, Comic Hawks. Look forward to seeing your guys' video. That'll be awesome. Uh, definitely try to make it about the writers this time because, you know, we focus on ours so much in the community. I wanted to switch it up a little bit, uh, talk about some writers, some good stories, maybe in tote bag bins. I can collect a good story one day. So uh, and then the last video I'll probably make this week is a, uh, I like to make a community support video. I haven't done one in a few weeks. Um, I know there's, I usually wait till there's about two or three contests I want to do and then show the guy support in one video just so I don't climb up everybody's YouTube feeds and all that good stuff. So. I'll probably try to do one of those tomorrow since I also have Monday off, which is pretty sweet. So uh, with that being said, thank you guys so much for joining me. On a, like I said, I expect to have zero viewers, I'll be honest. So in fact, I had some of the chat with while doing all these uh, unbaggings and that stuff. That was awesome, guys. So thank you so much for joining us. Uh, other than that, have a wonderful rest of your weekend. Happy Sunday. And uh, I'll be seeing you this week in the live streams, I suppose. So have a good one, guys.